I believe that as we get into God's Word today, that if we not only hear the Word, but we apply God's Word, that we can be changed. How many know that it's just not hearing the Word that changes you? It's hearing the Word and applying the Word, and I really do believe that. Thank you, Bruce and Lisa and the team. You guys did a fabulous job, as always. If you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. And we are uh, about two-thirds, or one, actually one-third the way through Proverbs. We're going chapter by chapter, and we'll end up at the end of the year, Lord willing, through the entire chapter. And we're in Proverbs chapter 10 uh, this week. And we are looking at verse 25. You have your notes. Follow along. How many Bibles do we have? Let me hear an amen if you have your Bible. Now, real quick, go, uh, go to Proverbs, and then if you can go with your other hand as well, and then go to Acts chapter 27. So we're going to go to Acts. We're going to spend most of the time this morning in Acts 27, but we're going to start out in Proverbs chapter 10. So Proverbs chapter 10, and then Acts 27. Weathering the storms of life. There will be storms. There will be hardship. There will be trouble. And as believers, we need to embrace the goodness of storms and what storms bring. Not try to run from them. Not try to avoid them. But live life knowing that storms are going to come. And when they come, you are going to endure. And in the end, you're going to be stronger and better. Proverbs, remember Proverbs is written by one of the wisest of all men, Solomon, and he says in verse 25, when the storm has swept, I want you to circle that word when, and I, I want you to notice that he didn't say if the storm comes. He says when the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand forever. See, what I'm believing for you today, what I'm believing for me, and what I'm believing for this church is that we have a, a clear understanding that, that not if the storm comes, when the storm comes, the Bible says the righteous are going to stand firm forever. We're not going to be swayed. We're not going to be moved. We're not going to be uh, consumed. But we are going to be able to stand whatever storm comes our way. You see, you're either in a storm now, or you're just coming out of a storm, or you're getting ready to go into a storm. And Proverbs says that when the righteous are confronted with the storms of life, they stand forever. Everyone say stand. stand. Oh, I like that word. It just To me, it just seems uh, uh, stability, strong secure. And we all understand that our security and our, our foundation is not in our ability. It's not in our power, but it's in Jesus Christ. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. And so today, God's word for us today, and we will never be the same if we will hear his word and apply his word, that when we are confronted with the storms of life, we are going to stand and our feet are standing on Christ the solid rock. I stand and everyone said amen and amen. Let's go to, uh, to uh, Acts chapter 27. And I'm going to give you five points real quick, and we have communion this morning, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, go long, but I want us to look at this wonderful story in Acts 27. Paul is in prison, and they are moving Paul and a shipload of prisoners to Rome. So they are in shackles, they are in chains. Paul is a prisoner. He is prisoner with probably hundreds and hundreds of other prisoners, and they are moving them to Rome. On their way to Rome, a storm hits. And now Paul writes here in Acts 27 some beautiful life principles that are going to help you today, and I want you to take notes. I want you to write it in my Bible. If you had the chance to look at my Bible, I write all of the notes that I give you. I write them right in my Bible. 
Because I want the next time that I go through a storm and I turn to Acts 27, I want to see these principles and they are beautiful. This is a excellent story on how to face storms, how to weather the storms of life. And it's all found here in Acts 27. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you five principles, five life lessons on how to endure storms in your life. Now, back in 1986, and the guys are going to get ready in just a moment to show you a, a little video, Tammy and I just moved from Orlando to Oklahoma City, and, and we were newly married. We were only up there just a couple, a couple of months, and we had just bought our, our first house. It was a, 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 back then, the bust was just taking place in Oklahoma, so we came at a really good time. Oil was down. The economy was down in Oklahoma, and we were able to buy a house uh, a three-bedroom, two-bath house for $65,000. Two-car garage, beautiful house. It was amazing. So we move into this house, and I had heard that, uh, that uh, Edmond, uh, which is a suburb of Oklahoma City, was famous for tornadoes. We had never seen a tornado, didn't know what a tornado was. And Tammy's sister, uh, Tia, was a cheerleader at Florida State, and she came up for the weekend to celebrate Tammy's birthday. So she was, a, she was a little valley girl. She was just a little teenager, and, 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 and she came up to visit Tammy. And all of a sudden, we're watching the news, getting ready for dinner, and the guy on the news comes on the scene and says, there is a tornado headed towards Edmond, Oklahoma. If you are in Edmond, take cover. Now, Tia, she was just a little 19-year-old little cheerleader. She's like, oh, tornadoes aren't real, and this is so, you know. She was having fun with it. So I'm out in the backyard grilling to get ready for dinner. And guys, God is my witness today. I look south and lo and behold, there was a tornado coming right for our neighborhood. So uh, it was an interesting experience. So Tia is over there going, oh, this is fun. Tammy's speaking in tongues. I mean, I've got the two girls and we are huddled up in our pantry where our washer and dryer, I'm hanging on the washer, I'm hanging on the dryer and Tia's just having a blast and Tammy's speaking in tongues and, 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 we, and we weather through this storm. It was amazing. I went on Google this week and the storm is on Google. So uh, can we show the clip? I want you guys to see this. And there's an actual video, real video, of the storm that I saw firsthand that swept through our neighborhood and totally destroyed 50 homes in our neighborhood. So guys, let's go ahead and show that real quick. This is uh, in Edmond, so we might take a look at that particular video. There, there it is right there. That's what right I saw. Right there the funnel cloud. It's getting ready to come right to the ground right here. As I'm in my backyard, that's what I'm looking at. A rotating wall cloud. Here it is, coming to the ground at that particular point. In fact, they can be on the ground at that particular point doing damage. And it is. Edmond, Oklahoma tonight. And that basically wraps it up from in here for right now. Okay, guys, thank Gary you. Gary Ellen, thanks. We'll be back to you. Up so trees. I'm in the backyard, guys, from Florida. Didn't know anything about tornadoes. And the first three months that we're in Edmond, Oklahoma, that hit our neighborhood. It totally destroyed 50 homes. I mean destroyed other than the fireplaces. That was the only thing in the homes. And it was really a shocking, shocking experience. Um, humbling to know that we didn't have much, but to know that all you had could be taken in a matter of seconds. Uh, for, for a 24-year-old kid, that was a pretty, pretty powerful life lesson. I learned some lessons from that tornado and really the lessons in life that I want to share with you. And they're the same lessons that Paul learned in Acts 27. So let's go there. If you're still with me, say amen. Thank you for letting me show that video to you. I thought that was pretty cool that it was on online and, and, and uh, brought back some... Uh, some terrible memories. I'm going to need counseling after the service here today. All right. So here we go. Lessons I've learned from the storms I've survived. How many are here today and you can honestly say you have survived a few storms in your life? Let me see your hands. So hopefully we, Charlie, yes, thank you. Uh, hopefully we can learn some lessons from the storms that we've survived. Here's the first lesson that I hopefully that we can serve, that we can uh, that we can learn from and walk by, and it's uh, number one. Here we go. I want you to understand that storms come suddenly and happen to everyone. Storms come suddenly and they happen to everyone. Look what Paul says 
and we're in Acts chapter 27, and look at verse 13. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought that they had obtained what they wanted, so they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before long, everyone say before long, a wind of hurricane force called a northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by storm and could not head into the wind. We gave way to it and we were driven along. One lesson I've learned, I think Paul says it here in Acts 27, that sometimes storms come suddenly and storms happen to everyone. I don't think you get a notice. I don't think you get a little sheet of paper that says, congratulations, today a storm is going to hit your life. Storms are not like that. Storms are natural, and so are supernatural storms. And sometimes they come suddenly without warning. You're faced with a crisis. You're faced with trouble. You're faced with hardship. And here is Paul on his way to Rome, a prisoner, and the Bible says that suddenly a northeastern just swept up of hurricane force, and it affected that ship, and it affected the prisoners, and specifically Paul specifically. There's no guarantee that you're going to have warning when a storm comes. There's no guarantee that you're going to have a meteorologist that's going to predict the day, the time, the hour. As believers, watch this, we need to be prepared and we need to be ready that whenever that storm comes, our feet are on solid rock and that solid rock is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? They come suddenly. They come without warning and they happen to everybody, even Paul on the way to Rome, he was faced with a terrific storm. But out of that storm, there are tremendous lessons that we can learn. And the first lesson is this. They come without warning and they happen to everybody. Number two, if you're still with me, say amen. amen. Write this down. Storms give you the opportunity to evaluate what is really important. Now, now stay with me. This is really a good one. Storms give you the opportunity. Everyone say opportunity. To evaluate what is really important. Look at verse 18 of Acts 27. They're in the midst of the storm. The storm hits. They're reacting now. And look at verse 18. Look what Paul says. He says this. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day began. we began to throw the cargo overboard. Watch this. They're on the boat and they've got food and they've got supplies and they've got tools. and They've got all the things that they need to get them to Rome. But in the middle of this storm, watch this, they realize that they're not going to make it with all the cargo. And so they do something very interesting. The Bible says that in the midst of this storm, they started to throw things overboard. And when you and I are faced with storms, that storm will give you the opportunity for you to come to a full understanding the things that are important and the things that you can throw away. You see, there's things in your life when you are going through a storm that you don't need to get you through that storm. There are people that you don't need to get you through that storm. And there will come a time in your life when you're in the middle of the storm that you have to evaluate what are the things that I'm going to hang on to and what are the things that I'm going to let go of. Here's my advice for you today. You will never walk through your storm hanging on to everything that you had when you started the storm. You, like these guys, will have to evaluate what are the things that we absolutely need and what are the things that we need to get rid of. And in the middle of the storm, it will give you a wonderful opportunity to clearly recognize the things you need and the things that you don't need. God's trying to, in the middle of the storm, he's trying to get you to purge He's trying, to let, he's trying to give you the chance and the opportunity to let go of some things that are maybe holding you down. And if you spend your energy, are y'all with me this morning? If you spend your energy hanging on to the things that are not important, you may not make it through the storm. That means you've got to release things that are, that are good in order to embrace the things that are great. 
You've got to let go of some things that you've been holding on to for a long time. And they may have gotten you, listen to me, they may have gotten you through previous storms, but that does not guarantee that they will get you through this storm. And so storms give you the, the, the opportunity. This is a good thing, to let go of some things so that you can be lighter and you can get through the storm. I talked to someone this week at this church who went through a horrific storm of their life, a storm of divorce. Been married for many, many, many years. One day he walked in and said, it's over. And this wonderful person, just almost with tears, just reliving some of the pain and the sorrow, they said to me, Pastor Scott, here I was, a single mom with, with several kids, and I was thrust into this storm. And she said, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go, but I knew that I couldn't get there alone. And I had to, watch this, let go of some things, and I had to embrace the things that were important. She said, watch this, she came to this church. She visited churches around the town. She came to this church, and she said, when I walked in the door, I knew that this was the place for me. I felt the love. I felt the acceptance. What was she doing? Watch this. She was letting go of some of the things that she had been holding on to, and she was opening her heart to embrace the newness of God and God's family and God's church, and she embraced God's people. Watch this. And she has been here now for 37 years. I'm glad Camille Metzer made the decision to let go of some things in order to embrace all that God has. And now as a church family, we have been with her for 37 years, helping her, her helping us. It's been a beautiful, wonderful relationship. Why? Because she was willing to let go. She was willing to throw over some things that were dear to her in order to embrace all that God had for her. And storms give you the opportunity to evaluate what is really important and what do I need to let go of. It may be time for you, sir, to take an inventory of the things that you need to let go of. It could be a hobby. It could be friends. It could be analysis of the time that you are spending. It may be time to let go of some things so that you can weather the storm that you're getting ready to go through. And I can't tell you what that is. Your wife can't tell you what it is. Your husband can't tell you what it is. Each of us have to take a personal inventory of the things that we are holding on to and make a tough choice to let go of some things that you've been holding on to. How are you still with me this morning? Amen. See, storms are good. And those guys had to make a tough decision. We, can, we can't hang on to everything. We got to let go of some things if we're going to make it through. Number three, if you're still with me, say amen. amen. Storms come suddenly and they happen to everyone. Number two, storms give you the opportunity to evaluate what is really important. Number three, I love this, storms reveal the hopelessness in you and storms will also require courage from you. So they reveal the hopelessness in you and they require courage from you. Where do I get that from? Look at verse 20. Paul says this, we neither had sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storms continued, continued and we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Circle that word there, hope, in verse 20. We gave up all hope. You see, when storms come, watch this, they reveal the hopelessness in you. They bring to the surface hopelessness. It could be fear. It could be anxiety. It could be stress. But storms bring out the hopelessness in you and I. But storms also reveal the courage that you need to have. So look at verse 22. I love this. Paul begins to speak to the prisoners, and he says this in verse 22. But now I urge you to keep up courage because not one of you will be lost, only the ship will be destroyed. Do you see the, do you see now within the hearts of the prisoners, the hopelessness revealed, but the courage that's required. 
Storms pull out the worst in us and they reveal the hopelessness, the fear, the worry, but they also require from you and I the courage that we need to get through. And I love what Paul said. Paul said to those men, he says, keep up your courage. Keep up your courage. And I feel like Paul today. I feel like we're on one big boat. And we are, some of us, going through a storm. And just like Paul stood up with a prophetic mantle and anointing on him in the midst of a terrible situation, Paul stood up and said, Pine Castle, I want you to keep up your courage. Do not be dismayed. Do not let hopelessness rule. Do not be concerned about the wind and the wave and the, the cargo going overboard. I want you to keep your courage up. And in the midst of the storm, sometimes that's what we need. We just need to hear that it's going to be okay. I love what Paul said. Paul said, hey, we're going to lose the ship, but we are all going to survive. And I've got a word for you today. You're going to survive. How many people are in the midst of storms right now? Let me see your hand. You're in the midst of storms. I've got great news for you. You are going to survive. The ship may be lost, cargo may be released, but you are going to make it. You're going to be safe. Why? Because God declares to us today, keep your courage up. Can you say that with me? Keep your courage up. Say it one more time. Keep your courage up. And in the midst of that storm, that's all those prisoners needed to hear. Remember, they're shackled. They're chained. They're seeing the, 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 the wind and the rain and the northeastern that was coming through them, and they were filled with hopelessness, but one word changed the whole situation. You're not going to die. We are going to survive. We may lose some things, but we are all going to make it. Keep your courage up. And what the enemy loves to do, he loves to discourage. He loves to pull from you the courage that you need, and he'll come with whispers, you're going to die. You're not going to make it. This is going to consume you. You're going to lose everything. You're going to go bankrupt. You're going to lose your house. You're going to lose your marriage. You're going to lose all your money. And he, and he comes with those words of discouragement. And I like what Paul says. Paul just stood up and said, keep your courage up. And that's the only thing you remember today. You have gotten God's word for you today. Keep your courage up. Well, Pastor Scott, I don't know how to do it. Well, I don't know either, but I know this. We just got to look to God and be strong. And when the storms come, we're going to stand forever, and I'm going to keep my courage up. I'm not going to allow discouragement. I'm not going to allow fear. I'm not going to allow a hopelessness to consume my heart and my mind. All I'm going to do is I'm going to stand firm, and I'm going to keep my courage up. Up. Oh, I'm doing a little bit better preaching than you are listening. Are y'all with me this morning? If you are here today and you are in the midst of a storm, I want you to stand up quickly. You are in the midst of a storm. You don't have to think about it, sir. In the balcony, you don't have to debate. You're either in a storm or you're not. You're in the middle of the storm today. The wind is blowing. The rain is coming in. Fear is creeping in. I want you to stand and look at me just for a moment. I've got four words for you. Michelle, keep your courage up. Bonnie, keep your courage up. That's all I've got for you today. Robert, keep your courage up. Keep it up. Don't give in. Don't allow hopelessness. Don't allow discouragement to creep in. Keep your courage up up. Keep it up. You're going to need someone. You're going to need someone to just come alongside you every once in a while and just say, I'm with you. I'm praying for you. I believe in you. Keep your courage up. Bill, keep your courage up. I don't know, I don't know what that means for you. Just keep it up. Don't, 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 let it, don't let it slip. Keep your courage strong. There's somebody standing here today faced with home. Uh, homelessness. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick them out. That's a, that's a, that's a big storm. 
And my word to those in the balcony and my words to that person is keep your courage up. Bruce and Lisa, keep your courage up. Don't allow discouragement. Don't allow fear. Don't allow hopelessness to creep in. You're going to make it. You're going to lose some things, but you're going to be safe. Keep your courage up. I want you standing just to, just to lift your hand just for a moment and, and, just, and just ask God to fill you with courage. Come on. Fill you with courage. Be strong and courageous. Lord, by your spirit today, in Jesus' name, fill men and women with courage. God, we break a spirit of fear and worry and anxiety and stress. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name today that you will fill men and women with a spirit of courage. God, I pray that they'll take their eyes off the wind and the rain and the storms and the forecast and the negative words. And I pray that they'll hear your voice speak still, small to their spirit today. Keep up your courage. You're going to make it. It is well with my soul. You're going to make it. You're going to have to let go of some things. You're going to reevaluate what's happening, but you're going to make it. Keep up your courage today. Boy, I sense the power of the Holy Spirit here in a beautiful way. feel like Paul today, speaking to the prisoners. Keep up your courage. Don't quit. Don't give in. We're going to be okay. We're going to make it. It's going to be tough, but we're going to make it. I can see the prisoners. I can just see just the relief. Oh, thank God somebody's speaking life. Thank God somebody's speaking hope. Thank God somebody's speaking a purpose and destiny in this situation. They were scared, and you're scared today. You're fearful. You're afraid. But just as Paul stood up in boldness and said, keep up your courage, those words of faith, it's life, it's power. That's all we need to hear is just a couple words. 